Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Halloween 2018. I think the first thing to say is this is probably the best Halloween sequel in my mind. And also, when thinking about this film, you kind of think of making a Halloween sequel and the practicality of such. Now, this isn't a bad movie. It's, it's, it's a very good movie. It's a very good horror movie. But the problem is with making a sequel to Halloween is it's almost impossible to get anywhere near to it. Because, and this isn't like, hey, all these movies suck because Halloween is awesome, but sort of. But also, because the thing with Halloween is it's a lean, economical, deconstructionist, very simple, cut right to the chase kind of horror movie. And trying to follow that up with a sequel is near impossible. It's also that when John Carpenter was doing that, John Carpenter was really fucking good at that. He didn't do the typical screenwriting thing of adding in a different twist, adding in a little bit of this or that, you know, showing off, hey, what if our film also does that? He didn't really give a shit. He just wanted to do what he was going to do. Like, he knew how to make a lean slasher movie, and no one has really done it the way he did it. That's why Halloween is a huge classic. That's why you watch it every Halloween. That's why it's, like, up at the very top of the greatest horror films ever made. Making a sequel to that, you're never really going to be able to do that because you have to deal with all the backstory you have to deal with the various characters not just Michael Myers but also Laurie Strode you have to get into like what has he been doing what's this let's set this all up let's do this thing and the original Halloween like kind of like brushes past that so quickly and very effectively by the way that making a sequel to it is almost near difficult you know I think Halloween's like one of those films like Jaws or Speed where you're like you know I feel like we kind of did everything and we don't really need to make a sequel so the Halloween 2018 versus Halloween 1978 or just Halloween to me motherfuckers I don't care it's like it's just Star Wars it's not New Hope deal with it but anyway this film kind of reminds me of the thing with the sequels is that the sequels can never really get close to that i mean i think you can have the shape come back but it almost makes it less mysterious and this gets closest to the mystery of the shape of michael myers it gets rid of the stupid like laurie strode's related to him nonsense which they you know comment on if you've seen the trailer this isn't a spoiler they don't really tell you how michael myers got captured after the first Halloween, considering that in this they've retconned everything that's not the original Halloween. They don't really tell you that, you just assume he's arrested very shortly after the events of the original Halloween. And I think this film, retconning all of that was a great idea and is awesome. And there's a lot about this film that works. From the screenplay from David Gordon Green, who also directed this, Danny McBride, yes that Danny McBride, and Jeff uh, Fradley, they're really able to understand like what works about a good slasher film and what doesn't, which the other thing with Halloween is it's been imitated so many times. I think that even hurts like the actual sequels because there's been so many other versions of it between Halloween's own sequels to itself that it's like a real uphill battle basically. But in Halloween 2018, all the characters who get killed, you have a certain attachment to. They'll have an actual funny scene that I'm like, oh, I actually like these characters. I hope they don't get stabbed and stuff. And that's something that the original was very good at. Try to get the audience to care about these characters because I think a lot of things with slasher films, especially, you know, Friday the or something you get annoyed with these characters and when they get stabbed you're like oh i'm kind of glad because i didn't want to have to deal with this person for 20 more minutes and in halloween 2018 i was like oh the babysitter and the kid she's babysitting they have good like chemistry together they're really funny like when he's attacking her i actually care it's scarier if you care about the person getting stabbed this film does have its scary moments it had an excellent tension it had all those things but being stuck in a suburban neighborhood feeling that way of being stuck there with Laurie Strode or with the other babysitters is something that this film can't really get because you have to cut between the doctor the policeman Laurie Strode as an old lady you know Laurie Strode you know looking for Michael Myers or Laurie Strode's granddaughter Laurie Strode's daughter you kind of get like a thriller slash slasher thing and you know all these moving parts towards it and I think it works really well with that it works as a movie and as a movie by itself I think it's very good slasher film but in terms of the chronology of what it's doing i think it is very much written better than any other halloween sequel runs better than most halloween sequels and it says more than most of them and it tries to say more by design if you're looking for something to try to recapture i think the whole idea of you know doing a kind of a sequel like what superman returns did basically which i sort of wish this had been called halloween returns like having three fucking movies called halloween is a little stupid but i think you know under the guise of what it is it is very good 
good. You know, it does work for the most part. You know, it's not a perfect movie. No Halloween sequel is, I guess. But the score by John Carpenter and his son and Daniel Davies is really, like, top tier. Like, what Carpenter used to do with his scores. And it gives it that feeling. Like, it honestly felt like someone doing their best to imitate Carpenter and what he used to do. And with the score, which gets it closer than I think, you know, a lot of people try to do John Carpenter direction-wise. And music-wise also, but... You know, they actually got him to do the music, so you don't you know, need to do that. The direction really works close to that. There's certain shots, like, I don't understand why they didn't get, like, Dean Cundy. They didn't get, like, more actors from the original kind of uh, films to be involved. I think Dean Cundy probably would have shot this. They do have, like, an amazing tracking shot sequence. They do have, you know, some really beautiful cinematography. But, like, I would have asked Dean Cundy, frankly. I don't know. This The guy, Michael Simmons, did, did a very good job. This is a very well-shot horror film. But I would have, I would have still asked Dean Cundy, who shot one and two, and Back to the Future, which gets referenced in this film, oddly enough. When you have that music in there, you get that feeling, you know, when you see Michael Myers just slashing, like, random people in the neighborhood because he's Michael Myers. I somewhat think that one of the things that kind of hampers down the franchise and anything, any time they brought back Laurie Strode, which I guess this is the fifth time, maybe? I mean... Two, she was just still there, maybe. So then you have H2O, Resurrection, and this. So maybe third. Michael Myers is supposed to be this force of evil who's unstoppable, who, you know, can will come after anyone just randomly. But giving him an assignment of Laurie Strode kind of makes it less of a random thing. Giving him a reason. It's kind of like sort of the same problem with the original Halloween 2, um, but uh, not as bad. He has to go after Laurie Strode. He has to go after... This specific person and wouldn't it be scarier if he just starts killing people and Laurie Strode realizes like he doesn't really care it never really mattered to him necessarily that he was killing her and her friends it mattered more to him to kill just people like he's a force of evil it doesn't really matter to him you know and he does do that and I think in that moment the film was like the most purely Halloween the original the idea of the shape and I like the idea that it almost haunts uh, Laurie Strode played amazingly by Jamie Lee Curtis who I love Jamie Lee Curtis I love that she has the hair from the original Halloween that was cool it kind of like goes against the whole theory that you have this unstoppable kind of killing machine and like he gets obsessed with Laurie Strode to a certain regard in the first one but I don't think like he was gonna like you know travel and do all this stuff to find her i think if he just found someone else he'd go after them and kill them it's not as personal so i think this film kind of like assigns a mythology and plays with that mythology while also acting like well it's disregarding all that other mythology i think this film like comes in a very genuine you know let's bring halloween back let's do our halloween force awakens basically let's make the best Halloween sequel we can Force Awakens is not the best Star Wars movie by the way to get the fans kind of back like remember that awesome first Halloween movie we're gonna do that that's what we're gonna do we're gonna recapture that and in a certain regard I'm like yeah I am totally there with you guys you know you're you're definitely doing it you're doing it better than anybody but it kind of just makes me sit there and think like maybe this was always a fool's errand you got the closest that anyone's done and making a sequel to something that should never have a sequel and what did you prove you proved there shouldn't be a sequel is basically what you're showing me you know i think there could be a sequel what i was kind of saying about michael myers just randomly killing people while laurie strode is just haunted by it and he just doesn't care would be the dark sinister edge to it it's almost not as dark and sinister it like makes sense and michael myers doesn't make sense the shape doesn't make sense why he kills people makes no fucking sense and humans like to make sense of things but what scares us is not understanding and the fact that we understand michael myers in this film does not help us in the original you don't know what he's going to do you know he wants to get back to hattonfield but i don't think he even understand why he's going back to Haddonfield. Giving Michael Myers more reason is the problem. He's a force of evil and you don't understand exactly what he's going to do. And having the mystery behind it, which they do fairly well, I don't think they nail completely, but they get the closest anyone's ever done, is really important. And what really makes this film into something that is truly special. It's the best crowd-pleasing Halloween sequel. It's like a fun movie. It moves so well. David Gordon Green, I think, has made an excellent horror movie. I would see another horror movie from him. I'm not the biggest fan of like his comedy work or some of his other stuff. He's an interesting director because originally I thought he was like going to be a Terrence Malick and now he's like gone in so many different directions.
directions. He's a very talented horror director. He knows how to shoot in the darkness and like really make like a dark Halloween night spooky. Like most of this film takes place at night and thank fucking God. He's also like so good with actors and I think that's one thing that like people underestimate in horror films just because there's so many horror films where you know you get people who don't not necessarily chosen for acting reasons and all that especially in slasher films and he really does nail that where he has like interesting character moments there's like a scene where a teenager who's been sort of rejected and i was like wow this is like i can remember being a teenager and being that stupid i can remember being in a weird situation being in a weird place like it really hates you there and that's something that not a lot of horror movies or halloween movies or slasher movies really ever do so in some ways it's like yes this movie works and sings better than like a lot of slasher movies of the 70s and 80s but at the same time it's hindered by kind of its own theory so it's like kind of a contradiction in a lot of ways like yes you have gotten us back to that mystery yes you've gotten us back to the characters that deborah hill was so good at writing unfortunately she couldn't work on this film it's almost like you got so close but you didn't quite get there but maybe they kind of just swam in that but i think there's kind of a twist towards the end it's like a couple twists or whatever but the first twist really didn't help this film and i think it shows almost like all these films show more of the genius of what carpenter did in the original halloween which was to make a very economical lean movie i think the problem is is like for the most part this film is fairly good at being sort of leaner and cutting to the chase but it's not that it wants to give you something extra with it it like really wants to like show off what it's doing it doesn't really get to show off what you're doing you really need to like keep it centered into what it is and you know going off in all these weird directions but i liked all the references i liked you know from Laurie Strode actually referring to it as the shape to having you know uh, halloween three masks to having references to halloween two and i always heard there's references to all of the halloween movies but i haven't seen people like spot them all but i'm sure there'll be like a youtube video when this comes out on streaming or on demand or whatever to go through all those i think this is definitely the best halloween sequel while i was watching it i kept thinking about how maybe I don't actually actually want a Halloween sequel I don't I don't think there should be a Halloween sequel but I did have a really good time with it it did get me the closest like that intense scary feeling that I had the first time watching Halloween that I've had from any Halloween film I purposely saw this at night so I could like you know get spooked out by it and it does like play off of your own personal paranoia there are certain things with the Laurie Strode character I think like making her into Linda Hamilton and T2 is an interesting way to take it but they do more with like kind of the Me Too movement and like the generations of women and Judy Greer is of course great and Andy uh, Matichuk Matichuk I think who I've never really seen and stuff before I like that Nick Castle is back of course that was cool and PJ Souls apparently has a really small cameo as the teacher the voiceover teacher part I think that's neat I I wish they had done more people more cameos gotten more people from the original involved you know even the people who get you know if you're gonna have pj souls why not get everybody else but whatever maybe they didn't want to this is the best that we're ever gonna get from a halloween sequel it gets the closest to it but it kind of just makes me think making a halloween sequel is never really gonna work the same way the original you're never going to be able to recapture that magic and so many people tried and having people actually try with the actual Halloween franchise you know no one's going to get that but I think it just made the franchise and the idea of Michael Myers and Halloween and the original Halloween more fresher in people's minds and reinstated that legacy and for me for that yes that's an amazing awesome thing and what David Gordon Green was pretty much you know like The Force Awakens almost like as much of a tribute to that original film and what Carpenter was doing and kind of like makes you fall in love with it all again and so I think if he was really just trying to do that if that was all he was trying to do then sure I think this movie was a, a raging success in that regard but in terms of actually just being a Halloween sequel it just reminds me that maybe we should have just stopped in 1978 so if you have seen Halloween 2018 and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to